Hi, I'm Gary. I live in Southern California with my wife Robbie, and this is my sifting trommel. I've done a few other videos where my trommel showed up, and I thought I'd do an update to go over this in greater details and explain how I got to this point. Originally, I set this up to sift wood chips. Wood chips are the main thing that I use my trommel for, and this has worked out really well for me. I use my sifting trommel for sifting sand. You can also use it for sifting soil or compost. I get my sand from a landscape company. They use their skip loader to move other material around. So sometimes when I bring sand home, I find that it has rocks in it. Occasionally it even has glass. So I want to make sure that that's not in my sand because I don't want to be playing around in my garden and getting my hands cut up with it. Basically, I used an old bicycle that I picked up. I used that for the ends. I'll go over it in greater detail. So originally, the way I had it set up, I had it set up in my driveway, and this is a working prototype. So I had an old bicycle that was mounted to a frame. I took one of the pedals off on this side and I used the other side to crank it and that would turn the trommel. Problem with that was I had to go around this side and load in the wood chips and once I had some in I had to walk around, turn the crank and turn it until most of the material was sifted through. Then I'd have to walk around the other side again and refill it. The bicycle didn't work out that well. It slowed me down. So what I did was I took the frame off the bike, left the wheel, I left the spokes and the gear, and I'll explain that in greater detail further into the video. And I discarded the rest of the bike. The bicycle idea would have worked if there was more than one person operating this, but I've found that I'm usually the one out here making the sifted wood chips, so it's easier just for me to load it in and turn it by hand by myself. Our property is around two acres. Because I've got piles all over the place, I needed something that was very portable. I also wanted something that I could leave out in the weather and not have to worry about maintenance. If I were to mechanize it, I would have to maintain it. I would have to run electrical cords or bring down a generator if it was an electric motor. Or if it was a gas motor, I would have to buy gas and I would have to cover it up once I've finished using it. The way I've got it set up, I can leave it out in our Southern California weather, which I have for the past two years. I don't cover it. I just start using it when I need to use it and walk away. So it's low maintenance and it's perfect for what I want to do. Usually I wear a face mask, but just for the video, I'm just going to demonstrate it without a face mask. You definitely don't want to be breathing in the dust from the wood chips. So basically I just turn it. All the small material falls through into my cart. My cart is actually a catchment. So I end up with these sifted wood chips and these I put on top of our planters or on top of my garden. I prefer the sifted wood chips. That way you don't have any large pieces that might get caught in different plants. On this side, the material that falls out are the larger pieces. Some of it falls out like that and just falls onto the ground. I don't need to be picking it up. The ground here is covered in wood chips. What's left inside, I just have to lift my basket off 
and I can dump it onto my file and drop my basket back on top. So anyhow, I'll get Robbie out and she can go over the details with me and I'll show you the rollers and some of the salvage material that I've got and the modifications that I've made since I did my other videos. Hello everybody. Today Gary is taking me on a trip to see your trommel? That's correct, yeah, my sifting trommel. His sifting trommel and we are walking by his bees. He keeps telling me it's safe. One was just chasing me. I don't know, I probably got in his path, but he's gone now. So we're gonna go over to his trommel and he says he's got a lot to say, so let's go. Okay. Well, here we are, we're at your trommel. Yep. So what do you wanna tell everybody about your trommel? Well, I did a video about a year ago and I was supposed to get back to people and go over it in greater details. So now the trommel's two years old and it's still working really well. The first thing I did was build a cart. So I'll go over the cart and the details of the cart first. And the trommel was built based around the cart. So the cart was a tow behind trailer for a lawn tractor. So technically it was supposed to be dragged this way, not pushed. So we went to a yard sale and I was standing around looking at it. I asked the lady how much she wanted for it and I think she said $20. I can't remember the details but I was standing there building the cart in my head and she thought I was quibbling about the price. So she dropped the price without me even talking. So I got it for less than 20 and I can't remember exactly how much but it was fairly inexpensive. So some of the details, I've got this tool caddy that I can put my tools in. I've got my fork over here that I can sort of sit in like that and wheel it around. So what I did to make it functional, I'm just going to turn it upside down now. I put some electrical conduit pipe inside this part here, bolted it in. Then I took the legs off an old wheelbarrow, I attached them underneath here. So now I had something that sat as a quad. The original tyres were inflatable and terribly degraded from sitting out in the weather for so many years. They were designed to run independently from one another. I attached some angle iron to the bottom of it to lock them in place so they would ride parallel. I replaced the wheels with these hard rubber wheels. That way I don't have to put air in them. I had to replace the bearings on these because these came with 5.8 bearings and this is a three quarter inch axle. So I just popped them out with a pin punch, put new bearings on the tires. I made a spacer out of PVC pipe because the original wheels had a wider rim. So I attached the wheels, got the new wheels put on. These are hard rubber tires. They've been on for two years. I don't have to, like I said earlier, I don't have to put air in them. So they're doing well. So now that I had a cart, I, I told Robbie to look around for a bicycle. So the cart you built first? I built the cart first, yeah. So you built the cart and you built a trommel to fit the cart? Fit the cart. So I, kn I knew what I wanted with a cart. This is very easy to push around. So I had a cart. Now the cart goes under the trommel. Now I needed bicycle rims. So I got a bicycle which turned out it was a mountain bike. I matched the width of the casters with the width of the rim. They roll along the raised section that the tyres were mounted on. 
This way they pass over the top of the rivet and bolt heads without jumping. So the casters came off this dolly that was recycled. We picked up some dog kennels from a groomer. So the dolly sat underneath the grooming kennels. So I saved these parts. I knew I'd be able to use them for a project. I took my angle grinder. I removed the casters. So these are the casters here. The frame itself I used as the platform base. So this was square and stable. The drum itself is fairly simple. I took two bicycle wheels, I removed the spokes on one end, I left the spokes on the other. That allows the, some of the material to get trapped so that when I lift it up it's kind of like a basket. I attached some cage wire to it. To attach the wire mesh to the rims I use bolts and I also use pop rivets. I work from the outside in so that the heads of the bolts and the heads of the pop rivets are on the outside. They're in the center part of the rim that's a little lower than the outside edge so that when the rollers roll over the rims they don't get impeded by the rivets and everything seems to run pretty smoothly. I add a washer to the rivet on the inside to hold the mesh in place. So that's half by one inch wire? Half by one inch wire. Okay. You can get that at a feed store sometimes. You can buy it by the linear foot. Some feed stores sell it to make rabbit cages out of. This was a scrap piece that I found. Because it's a heavy gauge wire, it's very stable. If you were going to use hardware cloth, you would have to put reinforcement through it just to make it strong. This is quarter inch hardware cloth and that's pretty flimsy. So if you get hardware cloth, that would be half inch. And you could make this out of half inch hardware cloth, but you would have to put running boards across the center just so that it would be more stable. If I want to sift coarse material, I use this basket. If I want to sift fine material, I just drop this insert inside. So that's the drum. I made it in three pieces so it's portable. So this part here lifts off. I have a hopper system so that the material falls in. And there's the casters. So this is just made out of scrap 2x4s. Then the base, I just made it with four legs. If I had more metal legs, I would have made it out of metal. If I had a welder, I would have welded it and made it more stable. But it's still holding up pretty good. I think in the original video, I didn't have these pieces attached to it. I've just added a little bit more support to it. So this I can just lift up to and I can carry this around the property to wherever my wood chip piles are. I can load it onto the truck. I could make it a little more portable if I put hinges to the legs I could fold those up but I didn't need to do that. So it's just a matter of moving this into position, dropping the roller on top I've got this set at a slight slope so that the material will fall to one end. I added an extra 2x4 to that side. So now it slopes down. The drum goes on top. It's got a slight slope and it just rolls freely like that. Normally I would use a face mask, but it's just a matter of picking up the wood chips, throwing it on top, throwing it into the drum, and just spinning it. So 
So the big pieces are coming out on this end where the spokes are. Yeah, a lot of the big pieces are coming out this end where the spokes are. Because the spokes are here and this has got a little bit of a lip, that captures a lot of the bigger pieces. So some fall straight onto the ground. The rest I can either drop on the ground or drop it into a trash can. This material I can put on walkways. It's pretty coarse. And the material that drops through the bottom is very fine. That material I can put on raised beds or I give it to Robbie. You put it on your pots and planters. Well, th now the material you're actually using right now to put in here is old wood chips that are already well broken down. Yeah. Going to the center right now. Right? I'm going to the center right now. So this is well broken down. This is... It's like turning into soil. It's turning into soil. It's turning into humus. How long has this pile been sitting here? Oh, look how dark and black and rich that is. Yeah, that's... <gasps> That looks better than what you buy in the store. Yeah, the surface is a little dry, but that just under the surface, that's what it's turning into humus. I'm going to say this is four years old now. This is one of the oldest piles that I've been working with. So you can just use that as a, as a garden soil now. Use it as a garden soil. So I've got a choice of how I how I use this. If I'm going to use it to top up pots, I'll have the smallest green in. If I was just going to put it on my regular garden, I would just use the half by one inch wire. Wow. And that's pretty much it, I think. So somebody's got an old bicycle, some wood. Maybe they can make something out of an old table or something and a cart. They can make themselves a wood sifter a trommel. How do you, you call this a trommel? A trommel. And yeah, they can make this if they have wood chips. I know a lot of people use their wheelbarrows and they use a shaker over the top of their wheelbarrows. But even if you could find an old table and set something up like this, you could park your wheelbarrow underneath. I add, added these hoppers so I can direct everything straight down. If you were going to use a wheelbarrow, you could do the same thing. You could direct it straight into the center of your wheelbarrow. And I can do this by myself. I don't, I could have mechanized it, but I prefer to keep things simple. And you've been sifting a lot lately. I've been using it in the containers that I grow the vegetables and stuff in. And when I ask you for some, it's like you do it in a matter of minutes. Yeah, now I've got everything set up down here. It's, it's a matter of, yeah, I can fill a lot of buckets very quickly. Wow, well, that's really cool. Really, all that uh, stuff you found in the trash or found at a yard sale. Yeah, it's basically all salvaged material. All recycled. All recycled. Recycled and repurposed. Well, that's really cool. And in four years, you've got all that broke down. And this has not been hand watered. So this is all just broke down by natural rain here on this side. Yes. You don't water it by hand, do you? I don't water it by hand. In the summer, when it gets dry, I do put my sprinkler system on top of it just to keep it moist. But the rainwater brings in the oxygen and nitrogen and that filters down into the pile and it stays moist for a long time. Once it gets a good soaking, it'll stay moist for a long time. Your soil is alive. I've seen lizards running through, those stink bugs. I saw a stink bug chasing a lizard just now. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a young stink bug. Oh my goodness. It's just coming into color. Okay, so that's what I found the other day that was kind of yellow. Yeah. So they come out of the ground and they're not black. Now they come out of the ground, I guess, a yellowy color, then they start to darken up once they start moving around, and this will eventually turn black. Isn't that something? Okay. And, and it's amazing, when I pick them up, they don't stink. They will if you smash them. I they, yeah, had a will. friend that did that once and she had to run out of the house. So they may not feel threatened, I don't know. 
Okay, so anything else you have to say about this? This is beautiful, that soil. Yeah, now this is just an update on my trommel. I hope I covered everything people wanted to know. I know it's been a while since I promised to go into greater detail, but this has been a good workhorse for me. I'm glad I made it. I've used it to sift a lot of piles, and right now I'm working this one here, so. Well, this concept, somebody can build one, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it should be able to give them an idea of how it will work for them. They may need it smaller, they may need it bigger. Yeah, you, you could scale it up or scale it down, exactly. Okay, well this is a good update, and if people have questions, they can ask you questions. And we'll see if you get another video together on this. Yeah, well with that, thanks for watching, and please give it a thumbs up if you like the video, and don't forget to eat what you grow.